The NFL players that handle the ball in the course of a game are said to play skill positions, or as sports writers might call them, glamour positions. But there's one group of players who handle the ball more than anyone else, yet their job is anything but glamorous. These men are offensive centers. Pro football's men in the middle. I've always said that uh, an offensive lineman, a, a center, if uh, somebody from outer space came down and said, what do you do for a living? You say, well, I uh, stand in front of millions and millions of people and get my uh, head knocked between my legs. If Rodney Dangerfield played in the NFL, he'd probably play center. There just ain't no respect for the men in the middle. Only a lot of pushing and shoving amidst the tangle of moving bodies. Surprisingly, though, only quarterbacks come to the line of scrimmage with more responsibilities before and after the snap than the center. Well, you first have to recognize the defense, understand your blocking assignment and uh, the guards, what they're supposed to be doing, and then make the calls if they're necessary to change a blocking assignment that may be more advantageous for the offense. Now, I got to take this thing and get it up between my legs, okay, to a quarterback with a guy about that far away from my nose who's firing straight out into me as soon as he sees the ball move. I got to get a ball up and then execute a block. He has got to take the nose tackle man to man and has no help at all on certain types of pass protection schemes. He's got to be able to snap the football and be able to handle a man on his nose, man on man. In the modern scheme of things, it is this one-on-one -on -one confrontation that determines the center's worth. For a perfect snap, followed by a blown assignment, allows nose tackles into the backfield, putting quarterbacks on the ground and centers out of work. He's crowding the ball. It's really, he's swapping paint almost. It's helmet to helmet. And so it's a very physical position. Four quarters of head banging in an area no larger than a broom closet can result in some unusual side effects. Some battle weary centers have been known to forget their team's snap count. Even worse is when centers forget what team they're playing for. L.A. Rams center Doug Smith speaks for all his counterparts in identifying the center's objectives, where the goal is to neutralize the nose tackle rather than dominate him. If I can get my hands on him, um, that's, that's the first thing. And then, uh, if uh, technique-wise, uh, my footwork. Get my hands on him and get my footwork to the side of the plate that I'm supposed to be and then stay on the block. Not so much take this 275 pound guy and move him over here, but stay on the block and let one of our running backs do his job and make the cut. When a center can control his opponent, the middle of the defense opens into a touchdown expressway. The act of controlling a nose tackle is more a matter of technique than brawn. A battle of wills won by persistence. I think at that position you've got to really have a very intelligent person, very poised and uh, calm because it is a very critical position on a football team. When a center screws up, it's for all the world to see. When he quietly does his job, offenses roll on to touchdowns. So the next time you watch a football game, instead of following the football, follow the man trying to keep his head from being knocked between his legs. It's pro football's primal matchup. During the 1970s, the Pittsburgh Steelers won